Hello guys, today I want to present to you another new course that we launched on Laravel Daily Com, and I will read a few lessons from it. And this is an interesting course that was in the works for months. It was actually finished almost two months ago, but it was waiting in line while we published more urgent courses on Filament 3 than Livewire 3. And then also there was a course on Group Buy. But today we have launched a follow-up course on a bit older course about view inertia. And the story behind it is actually my own tweet, which I tweeted almost half a year ago. So I had an idea of refactoring project from a single web project to also adding mobile API, both with Laravel. And this is a pretty typical scenario and the same was confirmed in the comments of that tweet. So what if you have a web project and then you have to add another layer and how to make it all maintainable, reusable and future proof. So this course that I've been talking about, View Inertia Food Ordering System that we launched a few months ago, has become a great candidate for a new course of refactoring. So what if you have a web application of ordering the food from restaurant? It may be a Laravel application, it may be as in this case View Inertia with Laravel. It doesn't matter that much. What matters is that it's a web project without any API. And then one day the company says to you, okay, we need a mobile application, please make it work. Which means you need to create a Laravel API on top of existing project and then somehow reuse the same code from the old version. But then the question, how to reuse on which level, how to test both and how not to break the older version. So this is the problem, this is the idea. And this is what we implemented in that new course, which I called From Web to Mobile API, Reuse Old Code with Services. A pretty long name, untypical, but it accurately describes what we're doing here. And step by step, we go crud by crud, refactoring it function by function. And in this video on YouTube, I want to read one example for you, our version, how we would refactor such a course into services in this case. It doesn't necessarily have to be services, but this is one way, probably the most popular. In Laravel project, if you have reusable logic, services is one of the most typical candidates to offload that logic to. And let's see how it works in this exact project. So the idea is this, we take function by function or model by model or route by route and create an API for that and then retest old and new behavior. So we started with admin API routes for admin to manage restaurants. That functionality already existed in the old view inertia course and we started from creating API for it. We enable Laravel Sanctum, which is already pre-installed in Laravel. Then we add a V1 API prefix. Personally, I like to do that already enabling version one from the beginning. And by the way, we have a separate long, very long article about versioning APIs. And I will link that in the description below. And then we create API resource to manage those restaurants. And it will be used for transforming the data. And the next step is the controller, also with prefixes like V1. And then in the controller, we're doing all the CRUD, like in typical API. Index for the list of restaurants, then store with transaction. We're basically copying the same code from the old controller of managing restaurant from the view inertia version. The only difference is that we return not the web, not inertia render or anything. We return that restaurant resource, we return JSON with a HTTP status code. So this is the first step to have API routes and controllers and resources. And this is an example request result. Then we transform API resource. However, we want to return only the things that we need. And this is actually the main difference between the old code web, which should return blade view in most cases and JSON API, which should return just the data like this. And the final step in this case is to add routes, as I mentioned, so route API resource. And this is the end of the first step. We created API controller to manage something, but for now it's just basically copy paste from the old code how to make it reusable. So we click the next lesson and the answer is service. Here are a few diagrams of how it worked before and after. So for now, as I said, we have copy paste of pretty much everything, but actually this part is identical. So why don't we move that into some kind of class and call it service. So we have restaurant service class, which would contain the operations of 
creating restaurant of updating restaurant because those are identical for web version and for API version. What is not identical is the request and the response. So what we're doing next in the web controller, we remove the logic of creating the restaurant and instead we inject restaurant service. And then in the store, instead of all that code in the controller, we are calling just the service. In fact, it could be a good idea, even if you don't have API and multiple projects, to offload the controller code into some kind of service. But in this case, it's a very good example of reusable code in the service. Same goes for update method. And instead of having two controllers with almost identical code, we have two controllers that are calling the same service methods. So API controller, same, inject the service, call the service method and just return the JSON instead of the web blade or redirect. And then the final thing in this lesson is to actually test both. I became bigger and bigger advocate of automated testing as soon as I started working on big projects, especially with refactoring. So in these moments of refactoring majority of the code, automated tests pay off in a huge way. But pretty typical scenario is that you don't have automated tests before doing this refactoring. So in this course, we did exactly that, wrote tests for both old project and new project. So the next lesson is test for API routes. We set up the testing environment, then define the factories which didn't exist, some seeders for specific scenarios, a method that would be repeated in many test cases. So some preparation work basically. And then we create automated tests that test that admin can view restaurants, for example. Admin can view a specific restaurant and more methods like this one. And then if we run those tests, PHP artisan test, on top of all tests that already existed, we have API tests. And then in the next lesson, the final lesson about that specific CRUD, we have also a feature test, but for web. Web tests, they are in the specific subfolder and namespace with almost the same logic of test admin can view something, but in this case from the web. So route admin restaurant and assert inertia tests the inertia stuff and web version. If you don't use inertia, you would test that the data appears in the blade view or is passed to the blade view. If you're not that familiar with automated testing, I have two courses separately on that one, on that topic, and I can link them in the description below as well. But what you need to understand in this case, I want to emphasize the principle of such refactoring. So you have old behavior and you have new behavior with some overlap. So you create a new behavior, then you know the level of that overlap, then you extract that common behavior in some kind of layer, it may be service or not. And then at the end, you have to have automated tests for both because there's a risk not only to break the new stuff, but also the old stuff. Because maybe some authentication wouldn't work the same way or some data may be changed for the new behavior. A lot of things can happen in such a big refactoring. So yeah, this course is about that refactoring step by step. And in the other lessons, we touched on other parts of the application, but the logic there is pretty similar. So I wanted to describe one API endpoint, one section, one model, one entity, whatever you call that, to again, explain the principle. So what do you think about that principle? Would you do it the same way if you had to create an API with Laravel on top of the web? Or would you maybe do it as a totally separate Laravel project using the same database? Of course, there are multiple ways to achieve the same thing in web development. So let's discuss in the comments below. I will also link that new course in the description below. It's available for premium members of Laravel daily as usual. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.